Hello and welcome to the 59th Python tutorial. Today I wanted to deviate slightly from our usual tutorial videos and take a few minutes to properly understand how we structure our code, as well as seeing some good practices to follow when coding. Let's look at this code on the left, which calculates the sum of five circles for a range of radii. In particular, let's analyze the overall structure of this code. We start at the top with our imports. Here we generally import all our modules as well as any external files. By the way, make sure to check out my tutorial on custom modules and discover how to make your own. Moving on, the next section is where we declare any global variables followed by the main body of the code. This includes any class or function definitions, both of which are covered extensively in my various tutorial videos, so don't forget to watch those if you haven't already done so. In the last part of the bottom, we have any remaining code, such as loose commands, object creation, printing of results, and creation of any log files. Now that we've seen how the code is structured vertically, Let's analyze it horizontally, left to right. On the leftmost edge, we have all our main functions, commands, and variables. This can be seen as a sort of key set of elements without which the code wouldn't work. If we move in by one indent, which is equivalent to a tab or four spaces, it's up to you to choose which, here we find the main commands inside our functions and classes. In this case, we have our method definitions inside of our circle class and the main commands inside of our calc sum areas function. By moving in by a further indent, we have only the commands contained inside the methods of our class. So we can see that the further right we move, the more detailed our elements get. If we look at the class alone, we can see that on the leftmost side we have our global function definition, which contains the methods of the class, which in turn each contains specific commands and variables. Looking instead at our function, here we only have one indent, but we could have achieved many more, for example using an if-else statement inside of a for loop. Anyway, I hope this brief overview of the code helped give you some idea of how to best lay out its structure, both in a vertical and horizontal sense. Oh, and also, don't forget to leave spaces where needed. As you can see, this is the same code as before, but with most of the spaces taken out. This style of coding is clearly much harder to read and should be avoided at any cost. With that, I thank you all for watching and look forward to seeing you next time. As always, don't forget to check out my other tutorials and Python challenges, both of which are linked on your screen and in the description below. Until next week, I wish you all the best of time, and as always, happy coding!